Faithless. Into your property to be blessed coming and blessed going out, to be the head, not the tail, to be in charge of the company. Now, now, now. If you still believe God, lift up your hand and say, I believe God. Come on, let's make the devil nervous tonight. Say, I believe God. If you come to the place where you say to the devil, devil, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many come against me. I don't care how fierce the storm is that's blowing against me. But I'm going to be like the Apostle Paul and stand up and say, I believe God that it shall be as God told me. Amen. How many of you here, God has told you something before? Hallelujah. Well, if you believe that word, it's going to come to pass. And the Bible said, Jesus said to Thomas, blessed is he that believe. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believers do we have in the house tonight? Well, you are blessed, praise God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you are blessed. And let me tell you what else Jesus, uh, what else the... Uh, was told to uh, the angel said blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which the lord told her amen say after me say blessed is he that believe for there shall be a performance say it again blessed is he that believe for there shall be a performance when you believe you will see god perform amen now Let's open our Bible to the book of Joshua. You'll discover that Daniel made it. Joseph made it. Amen. But there are some people who didn't make it. What about Moses, our prime example? He had a word from the Lord, but he didn't make it. And the reason why he didn't make it is because he could not harness his emotions. He got angry when he had no business getting angry. Are you listening? What about Achan in the Bible? Achan took of that which he was not supposed to take. And you know what happened? He died and never transitioned into his dream world. What about Judas? Now, if anybody should have made it, <laughs> should have been Judas. Because he had the man, Jesus, and he had the money. <laughs> Didn't he? He had the man and the money and still didn't make it. Well, what about you? You got to make up your mind. I am going to make it. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I'm going to make it. Amen. Now, let's look at verse 1 again. We'll begin looking at this this morning. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, let's all read verse 2 together, please. Ready? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Now, look at your neighbors and say, now, therefore, arise. Now I say this way, now, therefore, change your position. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're going to change your position. God's going to take you from a place of being broke to a place of being blessed. He's going to take you from a place of being sick to a place of being healed. Amen. He's going to take you from being in debt to a place where you have abundance of money. Hallelujah. Amen. Mucho, mucho money. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody here like some mucho, mucho money? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, glory to God. Now he says, now, say now. now. When is now? now? Today, right now. Amen. Not in the sweet by and by. Not when you die and get to heaven, but now. He says, now, therefore, arise and go. Like we said this morning, it's landing time. Hallelujah. Say it's landing time. Yes. Say to your neighbor, it's landing time. Yes. In other words, Joshua, the time has come. Waiting time is over. It's time to actually enter in and possess your possessions. Yes. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, waiting time is over. In other words, that which you have been waiting for is finally here. Glory to God. Amen. It's time to move in your future right now. Amen. It's time to be blessed when? Now. It's time to be healed when? Come on. It's time to be healed when? Time to move in your house when? Into your dream car? Into your property? To be blessed coming and blessed going out? To be the head, not the tail. No. To be in charge of the company. No. Now, now, now. Yeah. You've got to get that into your spirit. That God is a right now God. And God can bless you right now. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Come on, say right now. right now. Amen. The Bible says, say now prosperity. Amen? Amen. So, he says, arise, go, and get it. Now, let's come down to what we look at this morning again quickly. He says in verse 11, Joshua commanded the people saying, look at verse 11. He says, pass through the host and command the people. He didn't say, well, give them an option. He says, command the people. Amen? Do you think that sounds like a command? If you don't mind, please. When you bark out a command, whoa, the hair of your head will stand up. You know, I had a dog when I was a young kid. His name was Jim. Now, don't be offended if your name is Jim, okay? <laughs> but he was a German shepherd. He was a big dog. Oh, I loved my dog. I didn't take my dog for a walk. He took me for a run. <laughs> because he was so big, he used to drag me everywhere. But when he barked, whoa, whoa, I mean, he would just bark. And so I loved my dog because he was a real dog. And so one day I went, that was way back when I was a kid in Mauritius. Uh, if you've ever been to Mauritius, we got some crazy dogs over there. They got dogs everywhere. Crazy dogs, man. I mean, demon possessed dogs, I'm telling you. <clears throat> I'm going to ask me, do you have anything dangerous in Mauritius? Yes, dogs. They're crazy. But my aunt had a dog. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Pink Panther? When he asked the guy, does your dog bite? He said, no, my dog doesn't bite. So he plays with the dog, and the dog, and the dog bit him. He said, I thought you said your dog doesn't bite. This is not my dog. <laughs> it was a stupid movie. <laughs> I like that movie, hey, man. What was I saying now? Oh yeah, my aunt's dog. My dog, Jim, real barked real loud. Now, I was going to visit my aunt with my dad, and he told me, he said, now, you know, your aunt's got a dog, so be careful when you walk in the, uh, when you walk in the yard. So I'm already panicking. I'm nervous because, the, you know, I like I told you, there's some crazy dogs in Mauritius, so I'm expecting this dog to be ferocious. So I walk in the yard, and this dog comes out. Looks at me and went, oof. <laughs> I said, man, that's not a bark. And so because he didn't bark in authority, I had no fear. I had no respect for it. So he commands the people now. So he's going there with words of authority. 
Look at verse 11. He says, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you victuals. Say prepare. Yes. For within three days you shall pass over. Say pass over. You shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess. Say possess. Possess the land which the Lord your God promised you to possess. Say promise. Now say prepare. Pass over. Possess. Promise. Let's say it louder. Say prepare. Pass over. Possess. And promise. And just like Joshua commanded the people, the, the officers to pass through the host, I have a command from God on this weekend to pass through this host to tell you to prepare yourself to pass over to possess your promised land. Amen. Now lift up your hands and say, I'm preparing, I'm preparing. to pass over yes. and possess yes. what my God promised me. Yes. Say it again. Say, I am preparing, I am preparing. to pass over. And possess what God promised me. Hallelujah. Amen. I will not be denied. I will no longer be in delay. But I'm preparing myself to right now go and pass over. And go over to the other side of Jordan. And possess my possession. Because God promised me that. Hallelujah. Now. Before I, I go any further, let me say this to you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, rather, quickly. 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Joshua could have missed his destiny just like Moses, but he chose not to. Dr. Glenn Arecchiad's book, The Power of Praying in Tongues, will provide a major breakthrough in your life. Discover why the Apostle Paul deemed praying in tongues of utmost importance and why it continues to be important for today's Christians. Right now you can enjoy the power of praying in tongues and Dr. Glenn Arecchian's book, Receiving Direction from Above, for one bonus price of $25 plus shipping and handling. If you knew what God knew, then you would be just like Him, cool, calm, and collected. In Receiving Direction from Above, you'll discover how to fine-tune your spirit man to pick up on the voice of God. For an offering of $25, these two powerful books will change your life. The Power of Praying in Tongues and Receiving Your Direction from Above are available right now. Visit our online shop at glenarecchion.org or call 502-523-4407. That's 502-523-4407. You're going to have to make up your mind that you will not miss your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, look at 1 Corinthians 10. Look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For the drink of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But look at verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Why? For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, if you listen to this morning message, we discovered that God said that the wilderness was a long season. Right? And if God tells you that the wilderness was a long season, it means you overstayed your welcome there. You, have you ever met people who tell, when you ask them, how you doing, brother? And they tell you, I'm in the wilderness. How long you stay in the wilderness is up to you. It's your choice. And God tells us in the book of Exodus, let's go to, quickly to the book of Exodus. Let's reemphasize this. Chapter 13. He says, and it came to pass, verse 17, that 
When Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest, the, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness. Can you see that? The reason why they went through the wilderness was because they didn't have a fighting spirit. They had a slave mentality. Are you listening? And so the, there was no longer a fight inside of them. And God says, if I take them the shortcut way, and even though it's a shortcut, but there are some giants, there will be some battles that they need to fight. But because they have never fought for what is theirs, they will run back to Egypt. So God took them through the wilderness for them to learn how to fight. And there was no giants there, so they had to fight themselves. And they couldn't even beat themselves. And they were overthrown. Notice something here. The Bible says God was not well pleased because they were overthrown in the wilderness. God is not pleased when you do not transition into your dream world. Are you listening, my brothers? God is not pleased when you do not move into your God-given destiny. Are you listening, saints? Now, if the Bible says God was not well pleased, the scripture tells us in the book of Matthew 4 and also Luke chapter 4, he says about Jesus, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us, but without faith it is impossible to please God. So we know that Jesus walked by faith because he had this testimony that he, was, he pleased God. And so if God says he was not well pleased with the people because they were overthrown in the wilderness, the reason why they were overthrown is because they didn't walk by faith. So for you to move into your dream world, you're going to have to walk by faith. Amen. Amen? Now, the three major reasons, I want you to listen to me very carefully here. The three major reasons why the people of God or people today do not transition into their dream world is because of sin, Fear and unbelief. Are you listening, saints? Sin, fear, and unbelief. If you go back to 1 Corinthians 10 again, <clears throat> look, at, look at verse uh, 10, uh, 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. All right? Now, if you keep on reading, it will tell, tells you don't, don't be idolaters as some of them were. As it, were, it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play and so forth and so on. Now, look at this now. They, verse 11, it says, Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition unto whom the ends of the world are come. We see here that the primary reason why they could not enter in was because of sin. Now, you need to understand something about sin. The Bible tells you in the book of Galatians chapter 6, let's go there. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also, what? Reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, listen to me very carefully here. Many times, because we did not see an immediate smackdown, an immediate slap down on our action of sin, 
we think that we have gotten away with it. Are you listening? I remember years ago, I like cartoons. Anybody here like cartoons? One of my favorite cartoons is Roadrunner. Meow, meow, meow. I like that. And uh, Wally Coyote is forever trying to catch that Roadrunner, right? And he gets all his little gadgets from this company called Acme Company. Yeah? And everything he tries to get backfires against him. And in one of the episodes, he bought a boomerang. And he tried it, and it came back to him. And then in the, in, in the scene, you see him raising his eyes, like, this is it, man. This is going to work. Then you hear, meow, 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 and he threw the boomerang. Right? And the boomerang was spinning and spinning and spinning. And just when it's about to hit the road runner, you know what it did? It ducked. And it didn't hit the road runner. And then what happens, you see that the boomerang starts spinning back towards Wile E. Coyote. And in the scene, you see it coming. The boomerang comes, right? Let me see that. Let me even see that. The boomerang comes and doesn't hit him and goes beyond his head. Are you listening? And the next scene that you see is that he's walking and he doesn't realize and the boomerang comes behind his head, doesn't hit him in the head, but just keeps spinning behind his head. And he's walking and walking and he doesn't realize that the boomerang is just spinning behind his head. And when he least expected it, it hit him in the head. That's the way sin is. That's the way sin is. You do something, and you don't see anything happening. But you don't realize that the Bible tells you that the goodness and the forbearance of God is to lead you toward repentance. It doesn't mean that you've gotten away with it. What you don't realize is this, is that the boomerang is spinning behind your head. Now you can stop the boomerang by stopping sinning and repent. Are you listening, saints? That's the same thing. It also works just as it works in the negative. It also works in the positive. You begin to sow. You begin to sow into your future. You begin to give seed. You begin to give money, but you don't see nothing happening. But what you don't realize, and what the devil forgot to tell you, is that the boomerang, the good boomerang, is spinning behind your head. Are you listening, my brothers and my sisters? So make sure that the boomerang that you throw out there is a good boomerang. It's a faith boomerang. It's a, it's, it's a harvest, praise God, of much money coming your way. And when the boomerang hits you in the head, it's going to be a good one. Hallelujah. So don't play with sin. Keep away from sin. Are you listening, saints? Can I hear you, man? The, the more you grow as a believer, the more you grow as a child of God, the less you should be sinning. Amen? Can I hear any amen, saints? Now, so sin, fear, and unbelief are the main <clears throat> enemies to you walking in, into your destiny. And then we began discussing that we had to look at the right relationship. And then we had to look at that we must understand time. I want you please to write this down tonight. Write this down that your destiny begins now. Your destiny begins now. When? Now. You have to make up your mind today that today is the day of of your destiny. You, you, you're going to have to grab a hold of it now. Number two, write this down, please. Your destiny will require that you let go of yesterday. <coughs> doesn't matter how bad yesterday was, and it doesn't matter how good yesterday was, you're going to have to let go of yesterday. If a man or a woman does not let go of the past. 
he will never be able to step into his future. So if you want to step into your future, you got to let go of the past. Let's open our Bible, please, to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. <clears throat> chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. You know, I, I, one Bible says, Brothers, I'm still not everything that I should be. This is the great Apostle Paul. He looks, I mean, by this time he's an old man. He has accomplished many things in his life. Amen. By far, the most accomplished apostle. But he looks at his guys and he tells them, Brothers, I'm still not everything that I'm supposed to be. Wow. He says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Everybody say after me, forgetting those things. T-H-I-N-G-S, things. Forget those things which are behind and I reach forth unto those things which are ahead. Now everybody say after me, things ahead. Now say things behind, things ahead. Say it again. Dr. Glenn Arecchion is coming to Southampton, England for the Excel Convention in October. Three days of power-packed services with a view to releasing the miraculous in the lives of believers. Come to Victory Gospel Center October 10th through the 12th for this year's Release of the Miraculous featuring Dr. Arecchion and his guest, Pastor Osei Ibi Amohan of Nigeria. The earthly ministry of Jesus was miraculous, and it continues to be miraculous. So come to our Excel convention and receive the promises Jesus made for you. Join us for the healing service at 10 a.m. on Saturday the 11th. Come, receive the miraculous at Victory Gospel Center, 154 to 156 Portswood Road, Southampton, SO17, 2NH. Get more details online at glenarechion.org or call 023-80-551300. Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody's called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glenn Arechion Ministries. Today, considered to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.